CA students 678, how's it going? I'm John Segarian, the administrative assistant for CA students. It's great to be with you guys today during this daily Devo drop. Um, today, I want to talk about something that's been on my heart, something that I've actually been learning through my spiritual formation class at Biola University. Um, in my seminary class, I've been learning about um, just how important God is in the process of spiritual formation. Um, there's this word, sanctification, if you guys want to say it, sanctification. It's a long word, but it's, it's very important, and it, and it basically means it's the process of the Holy Spirit sanctifying us to be more like Christ. That's making us more like Christ. And so sanctification is a, is a long and slow process that goes on during our entire lives as we're Christians and as we're becoming uh, more like Christ and as the Holy Spirit is forming our spirits to be more like uh, the image of Christ. And so I want to start off by reading John 15 to you guys. So if you guys had uh, your Bibles near you, if you can open it, I'm going to read from John 15 verses 1 to verse 8. So if you have your Bibles, read with me now. It's called the vine and the branches. Verse 1. I am the true vine and my father is the vineyard keeper. Every branch in me that does not produce fruit, he removes, and he prunes every branch that produces fruit, so that I will produce more fruit. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I in you. Just as a branch is unable to produce fruit by itself unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him produces much fruit because you can do nothing without me. If anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown aside like a branch and he withers. They gather them, throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you want and it will be done for you. My father is glorified by this so that you produce much fruit and prove to be my disciples. Wow. So it shows right there that when we, when we produce this fruit, it shows that we are disciples of Jesus. It shows that we are followers of him um, from this, the fruit that we are producing. And so, as you can see, it's so, it, Jesus almost says it over and over in this passage that we need to abide in the true vine who, who is God. The true vine is God. We need to abide in him, and apart from him, we are unable to do anything, right? And so he makes this pretty clear that, um, that we need the Father in order to bear this fruit, right? In order to be, um, to prove to be his disciples. And so um, <clears throat> this can take us to something called Christian moralism. Um, and so moralism is, is basically being good, doing the right thing, right? And so um, in this sense, Christian moralism is not good. And, moral and Christian moralism is basically when we try to become better Christians in our own power. And so that's basically um, having a first response after sinning, your first response being, man, I got to do better than that. I got to work on myself and I got to do better. You know, I got to, I got to pray more. I got to read my Bible more. You know, it's all on me, right? All on your own power. But this is saying the opposite. This is saying otherwise. Verse five says, I am the vine. Jesus is saying he is the vine and we are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him produces much fruit because you can do nothing without me. And so here for Christian moralism, when we um, as Christians, many of us go to this response of, okay, I got to do better in my own power, right? And this is saying that we should not go to that response, that that is actually a sin to go to our own understanding, to go to our own power. We need to go to the Father, uh, first and foremost. That's what John 15 is saying, abiding in the Father, right? Abiding in this true vine. Um, he, he is our only truth. You know, the Word is the only truth. Everything else is, is not of God, you know? Um, and so we need to abide in Him to be able to produce fruit. And so what this looks like is uh, maybe something happens, maybe you're, you're in a sin, and your first response is, you know what, let me just pray and seek the Father, let me just pray. Maybe, maybe let me just go to the Word and just read read some of God's um, words just to me and let them soak in and let me just have faith in God and who He is and have faith that His power will allow you to overcome this sin, not your own power. And so I want to quickly go to Galatians 3, 1-3 as we close up. Um, 
again, Galatians 3, 1 to 3, and it says, You foolish Galatians, who has hypnotized you before whose eyes Jesus Christ was vividly portrayed as crucified? I only want to learn this from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by hearing with faith? Are you so foolish? After beginning with the Spirit, are you now going to be completed or perfected by the flesh? And so what Paul is saying here is that, guys, we, it is our faith in the Holy Spirit in God that, is, that gives us our salvation. It is not works. It is not our own understanding, our own power that, that we go to our works and try to bear fruit. That is not going to happen. The Bible says, the truth says that we cannot do anything on our own. And it is only by abiding in the Father. And so I just want to um, just encourage you guys to have your first response. You know, when you're dealing with any sin in your life, um, with anything in general, let your first response be to pray and seek the Father. Seek Jesus. Um, he wants you to go to Him, that, that He is your first priority, your first response. Instead of this Christian moralism where we're used to just... Um, just relying on our own power and our own understanding, and that is not going to get us anywhere. Thanks, guys.